Ridley Scott and Fox were on their way towards crowning David as the creator of the Xenomorph. But I hope that we are witnessing a rare thing where the studio saw the direction that they were going was not being well received by the fans, so instead of barreling forward, they took advantage and changed course. Which is ironic because Fox was bought by Disney and they can't stop ruining the Star Wars universe. But Noah Hawley was recently on the business podcast where he talked about his upcoming FX Alien series, the origins of the Xenomorph, and whether or not the prequel films are still canon. When asked if he was paying attention to the prequel films as per who the space jockey on LV-426 could be and how the alien was created, he said that he and Ridley have actually talked about this, and that for him, and a lot of other people, that this perfect life form, as it was described in the first film, is a product of millions of years of evolution that created this creature that may have existed for millions of years out there in space. And the idea that it was made as a bioweapon that was created a half an hour ago is just inherently less useful to him and to the mythology of what's scary about this monster. Which brings up a big question, are the prequel films canon to the series? Well, in the same interview, he talked about how the prequel movies use technology that was way ahead of what we see in the original four films, which take place in the future, so that look just doesn't work for him. He loved the aesthetic of the older tech from Alien and Aliens, so that's what they're going to use for the series. However, in an earlier interview with Star's Info City, he also called the prequels historical documents, and said that the series will focus on Weyland yutani and the political environment on Earth. So the prequels happened, but they won't be focused on even though they are happening in real time while the series is taking place. That modern tech either never existed, or it was only seen in the prequels because the Prometheus and Covenant ships are the best of what Wayland Corp and Wayland yutani could buy, and they were the personal projects of the company's founder, Peter Wayland. This change of technology is actually explained in the RPG, where monks from the unused wooden planet of Alien 3 end up releasing a virus that affects all modern computers forcing mankind to roll back to safer analog systems. But more importantly, this means that the alien that David created was not a xenomorph. Instead, it was what the RPG calls a proto or praetomorph. I was so excited when Aliens Dark Descent went one step shy of bringing back the space jockey, and that was their intention. When you look at the concept art or listen to the writer of the game, they called the skeletal remains space jockeys. They just didn't or couldn't label them as such. Even so, at the time I said that their inclusion in the game was hopefully Disney undoing what Ridley was attempting to do with the prequels, and it appears I was right. This idea really intrigues me because it's worked so well in the RPG, where Andrew E.C. Gaska has done something similar where he's combined all of the stories from the regular and expanded universes into one coherent world. So perhaps now we have a film universe that contains both engineers and space jockeys, along with xenomorphs, neomorphs, Praetomorphs and Deacons, where their true origins or evolutions have returned to being a mystery. And now these changes have made their way from the expanded universe to the FX series, which I believe will be in top tier canon with the films. To learn more about Dark Descent Space Jockeys or the Xeno City that creates them, try one of these videos. Otherwise, thanks for watching, and I hope to see you next time.